Welcome to the 2016 Extraordinary Women event. I'm Robin Christofferson, Executive Director of MCVP Crisis and Prevention Center. We're pleased and proud to participate again this year as the video sponsor for Extraordinary Women. As many of you know, our organization was founded by a few dedicated women in our community. We still rely on the volunteer and donor support of a few caring women and men to keep our free and confidential services for survivors of domestic and sexual assault and stalking available. Often it is through the courageous testimony of someone such as Joanna Labounty that the need for our services is so vividly conveyed. Thank you for joining us today, Joanna, and sharing your story. I didn't know I was in an abusive relationship until I was staring down the barrel of a nine millimeter handgun, a hollow point bullet in the chamber, my estranged husband holding it to my face, finger on the trigger. During the 10 years of our marriage, I didn't know that his manipulative ways were abuse. I didn't know that his insults, his threats, his isolation of me were all abuse. For everything I thought I knew, I didn't know what abuse looked like until it was almost too late. To the outside world, we seemed perfect. We had the big house on the lake, the fancy cars. He even had a big impressive title at a big impressive company. As a stay-at-home mom, I took on not only the responsibility of raising my family, but of hiding all of the bad stuff from the world and even from myself. When I finally got up the courage to leave, I thought that I was free. I thought that it was over. I moved out and I rented a lovely little house in Keene and I began to try to learn who I was again. Months went by and together my ex and I, we tried hard to navigate through the difficult divorce. He made me believe that I could trust him even after he had threatened to kill me and our children and burn our house down. On the night of February 9th, 2015, he came to deliver on his threat. He parked up the road from my house and he walked through the snow. He kicked in my front door I was renting, shattering the wooden door to pieces. And he tried to kill me while our children were upstairs. After a long struggle, the police arrived and he was arrested. The arresting officer handed me a business card from MCVP and told me to go for help. On the morning of February 10th, I took my battered and bruised self to MCVP, and I sat in a little office with a lovely woman named Joan. She had the nicest voice and kind eyes. She told me that all along I had been abused. They weren't difficult moments in a marriage. They weren't normal arguments that it was abuse. It was verbal and emotional abuse that had later led to physical violence. Joan walked with me to the court that next day to get a restraining order. She told me she was proud of me, she praised me, she helped me, she even made me smile. It's been a year and a half since that night with a gun and I'm still coming to MCVP. I come for support for the long court battles that are still ongoing and the even longer healing process. They're trying to offer me what resources they can and to help me create a safe plan for my children and for myself for when he's released from prison. I'm very thankful for the entire staff at MCVP and all they've done for us. Knowing these women stand behind me, I'm able to stand stronger. More than half of all women in New Hampshire have experienced sexual or physical assault over the course of their lifetime. Please consider keeping courage and hope alive for all the Joannas that we love as family and care for as friends and neighbors. Contact MCVP to see how you can get involved. Our materials are in the reception area. I hope you enjoy your time today among such vibrant and inspirational women. Congratulations, Extraordinary Women 2016. I can't remember an exact time that I really realized that helping people was something that I was supposed to do. I do know that after my son died, the thing that helped me the most was having people ask me about him and having people willing to talk about it instead of being afraid and running away because they didn't know what to say. So the listening part, I saw how helpful that was to people, to me, and I felt like this would be helpful to many other people. We created the open space plan and then worked to help citizens in town who were interested in conserving their land with the process. So what we helped people do and continue to do is help make their dreams come, th come true. It brings me enormous personal satisfaction. There is nothing like serving a community in ways that 
uh, really improve the quality of life. I've been a part of MOCO for 11 years. I've always had this very deep love of the arts, so it was an opportunity to be a part of an organization that taught theater, or teaches theater and teaches dance, and I couldn't resist, and I haven't been able to resist. It's a wonderful, wonderful organization. It really does. It claims to transform lives, and it does. You see kids just grow and blossom in this environment, and that matters a lot to me. For the last 15 years, I have taught at Okemo Mountain, and skiing is such a wonderful way for everyone to realize that if your situation is safe and you are in control, then yes, make sure you look around and then take that risk. And for children, it's a wonderful way to introduce them to that part of their life. My mother always used to say when I was little, I was independent. That was her term of this kind of a feisty little redhead. Do you know what I mean? As I was independent, and I think I've just always been independent. If I think I can do something, I just go do it. I'm hoping that, you know, someday I'll do more. It would interest me to work with, um, you know, like young mothers only because that's what I was, too. You have to let them know that, you know, you can just keep going. And the more people are educated, uh, the better citizens they become. They're more aware of the environment and how they can improve that and how they respect other people and work with people and for the good of all. We are, we're all on a journey. We just might as well work together. My mom, who was, like I said, a single mom, um, didn't have a license or a car um, until she was 32 years of age, which is remarkable considering the fact too that you know, we really struggled um, in the cold. We knew what it was like to be hungry. Uh, I don't remember, nor does she really, of having breakfast, let alone lunch. When you grow up with these types of struggles, they give you uh, more of an awareness. Um, and you don't want anybody to ever feel that. So I have a skill set to help people with trauma, but I also use an empowerment model to help my clients look inward at their strengths and I really, they're the ones that really do the work. I don't do the work. I sit and hold space with them and try to help them see the strengths that they, that they have so that they can make positive changes in their life if that's what they choose to do so. And that's what I love doing, helping people feel better about themselves and recover from trauma. I think every single student has every single person, every single child has something to share. And it's our job as adults to let them share it and let them grow it and let them become what they need to become and to make mistakes along the way and to figure out they want to do it differently. But it's their journey, just like I had my journey. Kids are amazing. You set the bar here and you respect them and you give them that voice and you give them the opportunity to, to, to design their own learning. They raise the bar. Certainly, you hear people say quite often, I get way more out of it than I give when I'm involved in a nonprofit or, or a project in a community like ours. But the thing for me that I've always enjoyed is seeing the end results, knowing that whatever small role I might have played at, the, at whatever length of time I was involved with an organization, that it had some impact, um, even on one life versus maybe many lives, that it's just something gratifying to see. And again, I've been here all my life. Giving back to my community is, is something that is, just feels right. One of the most rewarding things for me in terms of coming into work every day in and day out, even when it's hard, is it really is looking around the classrooms and seeing the students where we've really made a difference for them. There are lots of students and children that would do great at any school, but there are a few that need a particular one and need something different in their lives. And it's those, and I can, you know, walk around and kind of point them out and say, you know, we made a difference for him. We made a difference for her. Her life would be different. The people are so wonderful at Franklin School. I think when you spend the majority of your waking hours in one place, 
every day and it's a place that you really love to be, you're going to incorporate all that good stuff into your life and who you are and, and your colleagues become your friends and your classes become your own children and um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm not sure it would happen just to every place. When I was first teaching college students, um, I had a student who signed up for the Peace Corps and went to Africa. And she sent me a letter saying, here I am in South Africa teaching teachers in Africa songs and games and activities that you taught me in New Hampshire. And that just, that just summed it up. Why is it so special to have taught teachers be teaching teachers because they take the questions that you raise or the ideas that you share and they share them with somebody else and that person shares them with somebody else and so it's a ripple it's the ripples in the pond the people and youth that I've dealt with are usually coming to me because something has changed their life part of me that has stayed in this field is that it's people are fascinating um, and it's also I get fed by people. It's amazing to see the resilience and the work and the challenge people will go through to make a positive change in their life once they get there. And that is what really keeps me going. And then this passion for the beginning of life and supporting children and their families unfolded step by step. And I knew when I met that work with infants and young children that that was that was it that was the place i was going to land and support the development of human beings and learn from them and encourage so that so that the earth could be a better place i mean it comes out of the biggest ideals for me starting at the beginning to continue to be engaged with people is one of my passions, but on top of that, it's that giving back to the community and being involved in the community. I'm one that will get very, very frustrated if I see that, um, you know, decisions are being made or, or th things are happening that just don't make sense. Well, I can't just sit home and complain about it. If I want to change it, I need to be at the table where it is. The strolling of the heifers has opened my eyes and has uh, introduced me to our wonderful farmers and they're the thread that creates these wonderful Bacala communities. So we can't afford to lose that. When we start supporting our farms, we uh, shift in our thinking of slowing down and really thinking about the quality of our own personal interrelationship, our, our relationship with our community, our relationship with this planet.